Shalom, welcome to The Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, together with my co-host, Mark Warner, to statewide news service, jbiztechvilly.com. And as you can see here, column is for the Jewish press. Right, I'm having a lot of fun with all three assignments, and my column in the Jewish press is called Albany Beat. And I write about uh, how government relates to the Jewish community, or doesn't, as the case may be. And um, with us today, uh, well, you know, the, the land and farming has always been uh, a good part of the Jewish religion. But with us today is the head of the New York State Grange, uh, Steve Coy. Welcome to the Jewish View. Thank you. And Emily Shu, uh, who is uh, a lecturer and uh, mm -hmm prime supporter in Albany County of the Grange and so that uh, Steve while the New York State Grange is based in Cortland yes you're still an Albany County that's resident correct. so well you know that's terrific so you know, let's we, start from the beginning yeah, yeah, of what yeah, is the Grange and the history and what it tries to accomplish we have a half hour so. yeah. <laughs> well I'm just uh, I'm a city slicker so um, even though like Mark says really just keep in mind that if for people who read the Bible and hope they do, that it's just the Jewish people have many, they came into the land with a piece of land and they were really mostly farmers. So, mm -hmm. and there are still Jewish farmers today and I know them in the capital district and around, but um, you know, originally it was a very agricultural society. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, well the Grange came into existence um, around 150 years ago. Um, a group of um, agricultural related men, which uh, thinking wise, they were very way ahead of their time, if you read about these gentlemen, um, got the idea that in order for uh, those engaged in agricultural pursuits to get ahead in this world, they needed to be organized. And they saw the benefits of organization uh, amongst the city people and it did not exist out in the rural areas. And in addition to being able to get ahead economically and, and in this vein, they also saw the need for them to need to be able to socialize and to get together because, you know, they were basically isolated people. Uh, Oliver Kelly himself, uh, which was one of the prime founders, we like to call him the missionary of the Grange, uh, let out from Washington, D.C. and uh, homesteaded on the banks, on the east bank of the Mississippi River, up, at, up in Elk River, Minnesota. And uh, speaking of just going to a new land, you know, the first time that he knew anything about practical farming was the first time that he dropped a plowshare <laughs> into the ground. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and he went from there and he was, and he saw the need uh, being out there all by himself and everybody scattered around the place that they had to get together, they had to have a, a common cause, they had to be literate uh, in book learning as far as practical farming uh, in order to make a go of it. And as a matter of fact, uh, talk about karma or whatever, he really didn't make a go of it with his farming enterprise there. But uh, still he had the right idea and he had uh, basically seven or eight other friends that agreed with him from different parts of the United States and they met together for formally on December 4th, 1867 in the office of William Saunders uh, in Washington, D.C., a very premier horticulturalist of the day and formally organized uh, the National Grange of the Order of Patrons of Husbandry. That's a real quick nutshell of the formation uh, of the organization. And there's a birthplace marker in D.C. where this uh, occurred. That is correct. So next year is the 150th? Yes. Uh, yeah, okay. So you got any, are you planning something on the statewide oh, there's, level? Or there's something? all kinds of uh, big things going on nationally. Are you planning now for... Oh yeah, <laughs> because this, this coming session uh, will be the 150th national session. Basically, it's okay. not because they couldn't count. No. It's because they had two sessions in one year, you know, <laughs> back in the 1800s. Okay. And so this year is the kickoff. And by the way, it will be held in Washington, D.C. Good. And, Good. Uh, and uh, when, when will it be held? In second week in November. 
Okay. Oh. And uh, after election day. Okay. Yes, after election. <laughs> so you're not taking anyone away from the polls. <laughs> That's yeah. right. That's um, right. I wanted to ask Emily, what do you, what, what does the Grange look like now to you? Mm, it looks like a place for a community to get to know each other better and to work within their community. But I also think it looks different depending on, as Steve said, if you're in a rural area versus now an urban area. And, and what do you... Are you a farmer yourself? I mean, or what? I'm not. Grew up in the city of Albany, still live in the city of Albany, have about that much land. Yeah. <laughs> but they talk two about wanting, when they do rezone Albany, mm -hmm. they want to allow some farming in yeah. the city, you know, whether it's raising chickens or whatever. Talk about that. Do you know about that? Yeah, a little bit. So I know that um, uh, particularly Capital City Grange, which is a newer grange in the state of New York, and we're right in the city of Albany. So we spend a lot of time in uh, beginning of 2016, end of 2015, really focusing on what kinds of things can bring some more agriculture into the city of Albany. So we've been looking at how many farmers markets are available, what type of urban farming are people um, into, what do they understand, what do they still need education in, and really trying to see what agricultural education we need to bring to the city as a group, as a grange. And what have you found? Well, we found that there's a lot of people who are eager and they're excited, but they don't really know where to go with it yet. So we're kind of trying to start forming a small committee that can start helping the community to see what they can do. Uh, that sounds exciting. Mm -hmm. sound, do you have cooperation from the Common Council or the mayor? Or? Not yet. We're getting there. We're slow going. We just chartered at the end of 2015, so we're getting there. So you're going to teach a little bit farming skills to the kids? Could be. Yes, would be. I mean, because again, that's why we're thinking, and we have so many people on the show, and of course in Albany, and like any city has mm -hmm. inner city kids, and some of it is just like, hey, you know, I mean, just you feel good about farming. Mm -hmm. You know, you just feel good. You know, you just feel good about. It. I know my my wife is not a farmer from came, but you know, you just even plant some tomatoes. Right. You know, you don't have to have a thousand acres. It's interesting. I we're on the Jewish view, so I have to put in a Jewish idea that this is for a crime and punishment very fast instead of throwing a guy in jail because they stole and almost it sounds almost like gorilla cages I mean because that's one of my 10 jobs that I visit people in prisons that they say you're going to work it off mm -hmm. you're going to pay it off and like again as I started to show that there wasn't a you know it's not like working in a factory you're talking 3,000 years ago you know, you'd work on the farm. So instead of, so what was happening, I was saying, that instead of sitting a guy in a prison cage, literally a cage, hey, they're, you know, and these people are, I'm going to listen to a loser who's, who uh, steals something. They don't have a job. They don't feel good about themselves. You know, there's something totally wrong with them, obviously, if they're stealing. And on the other hand, it builds them up. You know, you see, you plant a seed, it grows, you harvest. And you pay off your debt. But I'm just saying the, the point is not the crime punishment, is not to show for it. But the idea of just the farming, you make self-esteem and feel good about it. So, you know, I mean, I think whatever you're trying to do is just also has a side benefit and a major benefit of helping these inner city kids, of just, you know, helping them grow. And it just I think a lot of kids really, you know, instead of video games, sitting there with an iPad the whole day, you know, get out there and you know, feed the earth. And I think that would be important really for really all youth to tell you the truth. And to hitchhike on what you said, the average person today is about three generations removed from actively being on a farm. And you get into some of the inner city areas, and not city areas, not necessarily inner city, um, and they have no concept of what is on the other side of the grocery shelf. No, I know. No, I, no, told, no, I, 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 I always thought totally tomatoes just showed up in the yeah. supermarket. <laughs> yeah. I didn't He's know where Brooklyn they came from. There. I'm from like Brooklyn, if there's so, a tree there. You know, it was there. No, I, I totally agree with you. I've <laughs> dealt with kids. Like I say, I have 10 jobs. And, ten, and you even ask them where an egg came from. Price mm -hmm. chopper. You ask Price them shopper, from an yeah. egg. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, and they're like amazed. And, uh, you know, I, I'm i more for a hands-on kind of person also. A lot of, like I said, the Judaism is hands-on. There's a lot of natural things going on. And kids in today in the cities don't, I don't, again, I don't think people appreciate, and that's what comes to a farmer also, like you say, you know, you, 
I always say even on a spiritual term, pray to God for food. Just pray that the price chopper is open 24 <laughs> hours a day. And I stand with a farmer in the olden days. You know, even nowadays, oh, a drought. who cares a drought, not a drought? Oh, oh, it's raining. Oh, it's a pain in my neck because now I can't go out and play baseball. Mm -hmm. But for a farmer, you're giving them life. And if it doesn't rain, you know, they're... They're more, their eyes are to heaven more than, you know, like I say, the eyes are to the mall. Mm -hmm. That's an important thing. And I, I just wanted to point out that uh, coming up uh, later this year in October, you have the, national, the, the state convention coming here. That's correct. To Albany. You don't have to travel too far. No, <laughs> this year I don't. <laughs> so what's going to go on at that conference or the convention? Uh, our conference is an annual thing. It, right. uh, it's a, a four-day conference, and <clears throat> during that time, of course, we have uh, housekeeping things that we have to do because it basically, um, well, to help you get a, an idea of what that is, the Grange is a hierarchical, hierarchical organization. Uh, there's a national at the top and the state Grange in the middle and then the, the, locals. the locals at the bottom, and they are chartered by the national. And basically speaking, um, the state grange is the, um, the major power, uh, hierarchical power in the state. The national keeps our hands off as long as there's, there is a state organization, as long as we stay within the parameters. And during, at that convention also, the uh, local granges throughout the year uh, in their various meetings come up with uh, particular ideas and they say, you know, um, this is something that ought to be corrected, be, be it whether it's something in the medical field or whether it's something in, mm -hmm. directly related with agriculture or military or none of the above because our policy is very broad based. They write a resolution and send it to us and our delegates debate it. And if we want to make it part of our policy, they adopt it. And then our legislative representative uh, takes it down to Albany or wherever it needs to be taken to do something about it. Do you have vendor booths, information booths, and vendors that come in to the Grange Conference? Some. It's, it's on a limited basis. It is, because yes. with, you're having this at the Best Western Sovereign Hotel. That's correct. And there isn't much space. That's it's correct. Not like it's, a it's not like a conference room like the uh, Hilton, Albany Hilton. Right. We do, we do have a display room, and we have some vendors that participate uh, in there, like, for example, uh, FarmNet uh, will come and, and, and set up a, a booth. Um, they don't generally man it, you know, but they have the things there that, you know, people can help themselves to. I think to. you have to say person it. Yeah, person. No, we go. Mark is correct. No, no, no. I just wanted to. Mark, I wanted to say that I don't know that your members, but one of the big issues is that the small-time farmers are just becoming extinct, or I guess less. And, and you know, these big farmer conglomerates are just eating up all the farms. So, yes. can you address that? Yeah, that and that's a that's an issue for us as well, from the standpoint that uh, a lot of granges. <clears throat> We're located in smaller communities, and with the exit of the smaller farms, uh, there goes the businesses in the community as well. My dad used to have a uh, kind of a, a saying. He says, for every five farms that go uh, in the town, there goes one business, uh, because farmers spend their money locally. And so with the departure of the family farm and the uh, kids going off to greener pastures or whatever and the land being uh, right. either left to be fallow or else sucked up by the big farms, as you say, um, the individuals are, the nucleus of the community is gone. And so therefore, there go the churches, there right. goes the grange, there goes everything that's related to a community organization. And um, I think there's a little bit of a paradigm shift there in some parts of the, of the country. Um, we're seeing a return to uh, more what have been referred to as harmer, hobby farmers, uh, particularly when you get down into Putnam and Westchester County, you're starting to see those 
uh, pop up a people lot. People have money. It's just like right. a side high. You know, that's a side. They're not and looking for And in the city of New York, rooftop gardens. That's right. Really? And, yeah, that, uh, that's a big thing. Yep, yes. it's a big thing. And uh, In fact, they were talking about building a, 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 a well, relatively large building, but one of the uh, accommodations that the residents wanted the builder to make would be the uh, rooftop gardens right. so that it kind of helps filter the air and make the air cleaner. Right. Also. And so basically speaking on, on a national policy, uh, the Grange has room for what is sometimes referred to as industrial agriculture because it's needed, you know, to in order to feed the feed the world, mm -hmm. you know, and but at the same time, we support and we encourage uh, the more local, the more localized yeah. uh, operation because they they have a definite uh, they fulfill a definite need within the community with the farm markets and, and the fresh produce and, mm -hmm. and and of course you know just looking at the farm markets you know they've taken off in the last in the last dozen years. Absolutely. You have 175 local granges. That's correct. And does that include the Albany City one? <laughs> Absolutely. That's, that's the newest <laughs> so chartered grange in New York State. You had 174 before Emily came along. Yes. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. uh, how many of those do you expect would be at this conference? Um, Will they all attend? or? Uh, our delegate system is is um, regulated a little bit. Each okay. it's regulated on the county basis, okay. and each county is is entitled to send two delegates, plus an, an additional de delegate for every hundred members or major fraction thereof. How does it? Uh, so it's like a weighted vote. It's a weighted right. So how? Uh, but how, when you when they come here for a conference, that takes them away from the farm. Yeah, well, a right. lot of them, a so. lot of them, uh, shall I say, are not actively involved in the agricultural pursuits at this particular time. Okay. Uh, some of them uh, have retired from farming. Uh, some of them have um, taken out other pursuits. Like, for example, I grew up on a farm out in central New York, spent the first 30 years of my life on one. What town? Uh, town of Smyrna. Smyrna. Okay. County of Shenango. Yes. And Mark knows every city in I, New York yeah. State, I guarantee you. WCHN in Norwich. So. Oh, well, heavens. Okay. Yeah, 17 miles up down the road. That's right. <laughs> and uh, uh, I still own a piece of that, by the way. I just oh. couldn't, but it had been in the farm, in the family since 1832, and I couldn't let it all go. That's it. You know? So you and got so, a little parcel. That's, that's right. But um, anyway, you know, um, allergies amongst the, the big main force, you know, uh, forced me to take another career change, you know, mm -hmm. when it comes to that. But uh, and where'd you go with the career change? Right down here. I worked at the state Senate for 38 years. Mm -hmm. I used to see you come by my office. What was your, uh, <laughs> I was, what, what, what were you doing there? I was a supervisor in the Senate document office in the Capitol. Right. Okay. And so, I wanted you to say it. I yes. Say it. Okay. yes. <laughs> so Mark, I have, you know, at the beginning, I didn't want to interrupt you. Yes, and I have did. a little. <laughs> I know, I don't interrupt people. I interrupt Mark, that's all. But in any case, that you say a farmer has to be, well, you know, someone who's learned. That's like, there you study even in the 1860s to read a book. And I used to, you, again, I say I have 10 jobs and I had to supervise kosher milk on a dairy farm in New York, of course, near here. And, um, you know, maybe I'm a little prejudiced, but I figure, all right, what's a farmer? Someone takes care of cows. You need a cow to... So there's one guy, he's standing there with a pole, right with boots, high-level boots, in the mud, in the barn. And he's got a pole, and he's sitting there with a computer on the, you know, on the stand. And, you know, all this. so he said, you know, this guy, you know, I says, all right, taking care of cows, what do you have to do? He says, no, that person is a graduate from Cornell. Mm -hmm. You know, graduate from Cornell, you know, and taking care of cows. But like you say, that really gave me an education that, sure. that these people, they said they have to know antibiotics. You know, it really is. Once I, was, you know, walked around and learned the business, that was my job just to be sure it was sure. kosher. Mm -hmm. You know, I go walking around finding out what's happening. And, uh, you know, like you say, you really did, they said, really, if you're going to run a farm today, you better know how to use that computer. Absolutely. And this is one of our big initiatives at this particular time. 
uh, as rural electrification was back in the 30s, and, and that is getting broadband out into the rural areas because um, it's, it's practically a necessity these days, and there are an awful lot of rural areas that are very underserved with uh, any kind of computer access, say nothing about broadband. But I think the governor so, just allowed it, didn't he? Yeah, it takes time to build it out. It takes time to build it out, and um, the unfortunate thing is that, uh, well, or fortunate, depending on which, which uh, end of the aspect of this you're on, right. it's, an economic, it's an economic decision. And um, it's, well, case in point, when cable TV first came around, mm -hmm. people in the villages and the cities had it, but it didn't go out very far because these guys wanted uh, 20 houses a mile That's right. in order to serve. It's the same thing with broadband today. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same thing. But if it's they don't, going to happen, though. It's going to happen. It happens, but it takes. But it takes time. Really? And I so once they said so it's going it to happen, I figure it. Well, it sounds yeah. good for the governor to say it, but then the reality is, is that you know you can only work. Uh, you, know, you got to work where it's so practical. Look, we, we're in the library, Albany Public Library. We don't have uh, fiber here. There's fiber outside the building, but they would run. They would have to run six fiber links in order to make it profitable for Time Warner Cable, they couldn't just run one or two just to our studio. They'd have to uh, make available six or seven fiber links so that the other uh, offices on this block would be able to take advantage of the fiber. Good make it affordable. Good friend of mine, very, very uh, huge maple producer out in the middle of Delaware County, you know, ships all over the world, you know, uh, last I knew, he was still having to rely on dial-up. Well, that's pretty sad. Uh, was it Pinder's Corners? Well, it's the other side of Pinder's Corners. It was just out in Harper's Field, actually. Harpers, okay. So, because uh, Pinder's Corners, you know why that's famous. Um, United, Senate, U.S. Senator Daniel Patrick, uh, Daniel Moynihan, Patrick Moynihan, Moynihan lived Henderson. there. Yes, he did. And uh, that's where Hillary Clinton kicked off her U.S. Senate bid when Moynihan retired. Yes, and so. <laughs> I should say Chris, Kirsten Gillibrand kicked hers off at, uh, at uh, the farm I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Why don't you write a book about the trivial ideas of New York State? He knows every uh, inch of what happened in I New York State. I wanted to ask you about the Grange. You give out scholarship. You have a scholarship fund, the Denise Scholarship Fund. The Denise Scholarship Fund. And, and what does that do, and how is that awarded? And that is, um, we give up to uh, four or five scholarships a year, depending on, uh, you know, the applications. It's. Um, they do not have to be Grange members to be uh, eligible, mm -hmm. but they do have to go into the study of agriculture. Uh -huh. um, the Denise people were, uh, had a few, huge agricultural operation in western New York, and uh, they wanted to have a legacy left, and so they right. left, so they, left so, a scholarship to the so Grange. So every year you... You give out how much money in scholarships? Oh, there are thousand dollars to piece of okay. scholarships. And then you also have the Freestone Education Award. Right. But these things do you have to go for farming? Do you have to declare a major in some kind of agricultural studies or that's that's correct. All in right, some type ahead. of agriculture. But I mean it's not just milking cows, you know, I mean right. it's uh, uh, anything in the agricultural field. Well that's what I say. I mean I learned that also. It's getting very sophisticated, you know, the Oh absolutely. You know, it's so not, the, like you say, it's not just building. So f Susan Freestone cows. is from Interlaken. Susan Freest, it was named after her because right. she was the uh, junior superintendent uh, for, for the State Grange for mm -hmm. a number of years. And originally that scholarship was uh, limited to um, children, well it still is limited to kids that have come, that are, that are Grange members and have participated in the junior organization first. And, but back in the day, it was lim also limited, the fact it could only be used at the uh, New York State Agricultural and Technical 
Agnes Institute. Tech Institute. Schools. It's like Morrisville, Cobleskill, mm -hmm. and that. Mm -hmm. And uh, Delhi. In Delhi, yeah. you know, and uh, since they have broadened the base of, of those particular schools, mm -hmm. uh, we broadened the base of where it was uh, uh, applicable. There was a New York State Agricultural Society. Was that tied in with the Grange? No, it's not tied in with the Grange, but it's still very much a viable organization. They meet once a year. Um, in uh, Syracuse, have for the last twenty or so. They used first to give, week in January. I don't know if they still give out journalism awards, but they yes, used to give out. Yes, they do. Awards. It's called the Cap Creole Journalism That's right. Award. I won that one year. Did you? Yes. Right. Because I wrote about, I did a broadcast uh, story, a series of stories about how upstate and downstate couldn't exist without agriculture being tied in, because upstate wouldn't needs the downstate markets to export. And the downstate markets need the upstate crops mm -hmm. to help them be profitable and grow. And when I pointed all this out and I showed how we we're all one state that way, mm -hmm. that got me the award. Absolutely. So I told them I'm from Brooklyn, and mm -hmm. when I went up to receive the $50 award, uh, they, they, they said, uh, I said, uh, you know, the only thing we grow in Brooklyn is marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> and when it's a Shirley, cash crop over here. <laughs> and when Shirley Chisholm from Brooklyn went to Congress, she was put on the U.S. Agriculture Committee, mm -hmm. uh, mainly because of the food stamps, but someone asked who didn't know, why would someone from Brooklyn be on the Agriculture Committee? And they said, well, someone heard that a tree grows in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> that, <is laughs> so that was funny. So that, that, that's, uh, that, that was it. And then I uh, Well, you quit. always bring up, why don't you bring up one of the details that you are almost I, a New York State historian, what is the biggest cash, you know, what is the biggest trade in New York State and everybody, you know, a normal oh, person. Oh, they think it's yeah. agriculture is the number one that's you know, correct. You would think Wall Street, everybody would think right. New York right. State, oh, but there's billions of dollars. Two. Tourism is number two. Right. That's correct. And the fourth is Wall Street and finance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Probably the difference between agriculture and Wall Street is that there's a lot more of fluidity with cash uh, than there is with agriculture mm -hmm. because, you know, there's farmers out there that have huge investments you know, and maybe a couple of 20s in their pocket. It's all green. It's all it's green. Wall Street or you upstate know. and the farms, it's all yeah, green. But are young people <laughs> getting into, I mean, you say the Grange, but are you dealing with young people? I guess you're, I mean, you're a young person, but you live in Albany and must not have too big a farm. You know, are young people walking away from it to see what's the future hold? Emily, why don't you address that? Well, I think in regard to farming, there are definitely a lot of initiatives, like Steve was talking about, a lot of scholarships, and that entices people to go into that field. Um, there are a lot of other organizations in New York State that the Grange can partner with, or they can relay that information to other younger people. Um, the shirt that I'm wearing specifically, Apathy Not Allowed on it, yeah. is through the National Grange for youth and young adults to encourage not farming, but legislative awareness, um, and to teach young people about what their surroundings are. So we really are focused on helping the youth and young adults as well. You know, but I would think, I mean, again, I'm asking you, because you know, but you know, there is this almost like organic movement. You know, people want good food. It's not like just give me some food, or even like we were just joking around going to the grocery store. I mean, people are really into the food they want, the organic food they want, nutritious food, non-kosher, non-GMO food. <laughs> non food. You know, people are really into food, so you would think there's not 100%, but just a growing people, hey, we're into food and maybe farming our own pure, organic, and mm -hmm. proper food. I mean, I'm just... Thinking about, you know, food is always, no one can walk away from food. It's got to be, it's got to be there. And, and you're right on with that standpoint. And, and that is that there, there's beginning to be a little bit of a paradigm shift in relation to younger people and getting involved in, uh, actively involved in agricultural pursuits and this type of thing. Um, and, and getting involved with organizations at the same time, which they have, uh, there's been a three or four generation uh, time span when didn't want to get involved with anything. You know. And you know what? I noticed that uh, drones are very much into uh, uh, the fabric of agriculture. How's because that? You can, because when you have so many hundreds of acres, you, want, you can fly the drone and you could see from the drone how your crops are doing. 
and you could see, without having to go through the fields, and mm -hmm. you could see where the patches are and where you're not. That's uh, interesting. That's pretty regionalized, right? And I don't think that technology is widespread at this point. Yeah, it's uh, cutting edge. Here. It's, it's, yeah. it's cutting edge. It is coming in, and uh, <laughs> there's a lot of cutting edge stuff out there. I was uh, at a. Uh, at a, at a farm show here a while ago, we're looking at some equipment, and there is equipment out there that works off satellite. And when it is, uh, um, say, drilling in corn yeah. in the springtime, there are sensors in there that it tells that reads the type of soil is, and how much fertilizer it's going to need for that mm -hmm. for that particular space mm -hmm. where they are yeah. in the field, and how many seeds per inch, and this type of thing. All right off the, Analyzer. right off the bird. That's right. And I wanted to just leave you on this one note that Paul Tonko once told me, and he told me I didn't have to credit him, but it was a, like 30 years ago he said this, that when you think, people think of New York State, they think of skyscrapers, the bright lights on Broadway, and the Statue of Liberty. But the real New York State, the silos are our skyscrapers, the bright lights in the milking barn at 5 a.m. are the bright lights of New York, and the liberty to farm one's own land is the liberty of New York State. Yep, he's right on, on, spot on on that one. Mm -hmm. All right, with that, uh, we want to thank you for, I mean, listen, we need all to eat. Your industry will never get out of That's whack. Right. And, but uh, continue going in on behalf, really, for all the farmers that, you know, they need a lot of mazel, you say, a lot of luck and success mm -hmm. and help from uh, heaven. And they should have it and should have abundant crops and everybody should have a good meal and eat well from the and thanks to the farmers. Thank you very Absolutely. much for your time. Thank you well, for coming. Thank you for the invitation to thank join you. you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm.